My fellow St. Georgians, at the end of 2014, we closed yet another chapter in the history and legacy of this noble parish. 2014 was both a year of gain and a year of sad loss for us. There were periods of great refreshment, but also moments of great concern. Above all, however, I give God thanks for the wonderful work we have done here at the Church of St. George. I rejoice that you continue to offer rich hospitality and support to me, and that you continue to support and encourage each other in the work to which we have been called to do. As we walk into 2015, my prayer and hope is that we will continue to journey together and work steadfastly and with more intentionality in the ministry and mission of our parish. So, what has happened over the past year? As you are aware, we welcomed a few more new families into our midst, including the Naki family, the Linz family, the Froki family, Annie Fulton, Lian Ji, and Beth Holland, and her son, James Baswin. We cherish each of these families, and what a great addition they have been to our church. Certainly, their presence has been an added blessing. I pray that those families who have become a part of our spiritual family in the last year, that their worship experience and fellowship at this church has been nothing short of a blessing and spiritually edifying for them. My hope and prayer is also that we will continue to expand our spiritual family at this church each year. During the course of the last year, there were also five baptisms, Danica and Alora Delugu, Catherine Lynn Hartlin, James Baswin, and the crew, Henry Miller. Also, we had two well-enjoyed, fantastic weddings, Steve and Abigail Whitbecker, son-in-law and daughter of Greg and Beth Hester, and Tyler and Diana Harden son and daughter-in-law of John and Barbara Harden. The joy was all mine to journey with them and to prepare them for the warfare. Sorry, I mean the joy of marriage. <laughs> Last year, we also had a huge memorable moment as 14 of our youth were confirmed by Bishop Sutton. This was the first confirmation we had in a long time here at St. George's and it was refreshing and joyful and wonderful and spiritually uplifting. At this time, the bishop also officially welcomed all new families into the parish. In the midst of our celebration and growth, however, we were saddened by some significant losses amidst our family. Last year, as you are well aware, several parishioners died and we miss them dearly. Christine Ayler, whose faith never wavered despite her pain, Bobby Boyles, whom I met only once, but left from that visit feeling so inspired by her humor, devotion, and inner strength. Donald Abernathy, who may not have been a part of our weekly services, but whose presence shone brightly through his daughter, Debbie Fiakos. And of course, how could we forget our dear brother, Norman Durham, whose presence and faithfulness is sorely missed. We will never forget him. Norm, as he was affectionately called, helped and toiled tirelessly to build this parish. So for his work and witness, and all others who have died this past year, we give God thanks. May they rest in peace, and may God's light perpetually shine upon them. We also bid bon voyage to three families that relocated last year, Mike and Sue Fiorino, Muriel Drake, and the Markowitz family. All of them have been outstanding contributors to the progress and development of this parish over the years. On your behalf, 
I personally thank them for their hard work and commitment and pray God's blessing upon them in their new homes and endeavors. Mike continues to assist the parish, and for that, we are grateful. Concerning our two Eucharistic services, which continue to be held almost every Sunday in the parish, we averaged about 102 individuals collectively. During Lent, we held our annual weekly simple supper and Bible study, which was well attended. We studied the book of Jonah. We also had our annual picnic last year, which was celebrated with enthusiasm and fun as we had a bounce house and almost a mini fair for the children. I want to personally thank Linda Goodman for her undying support and great organization of these events. Linda's ability was clearly seen when Bishop Sutton visited us and we had a feast to behold. May God bless you and your team, Linda. I also want to thank the altar service, the ushers, and the readers, led by Allegra Simonet and Steve Black, who continue to do a fantastic job, as well as our committed and wonderfully accommodating Alter Gill, led by Robin Nolan. Thank you for having patience with me and my liturgical demands. To all of you, your work is much appreciated. I also want to thank the commission heads for their hard work over the past year, as we continue to work toward the fulfillment of our mission for this parish. To this end, we held our annual leadership retreat last October, which went exceptionally well. Among the many ideas that emerged, we all agreed that our main focus as a church is to continue to pour into the lives of our parishioners and build the congregation spiritually. In other words, we must continue to seek first the kingdom of God, knowing then that all things will be added unto us. Our growth in other areas will come, I believe, as long as we are planted and remain firmly grounded in Christ, the solid rock. This planting is very much alive and at work in our Sunday school and children's choir that continues to thrive, as well as our youth group that is currently being rebuilt. I want to thank Jean Dixon and her team for their hard work with the Sunday School, as well as Dottie Lucas and Leslie G, who continue to pour so much into our youth, and Ralph, who stands by and works diligently with the children's choir, as well as the adult choir. I firmly believe that the youth are the church of today, and the hope of the church tomorrow. Further, we continue to sow seeds in our other commissions and their work, through our other commissions and their work, as we give God thanks for the work being done in their ministries. I want to thank Diane Martin and Sandy Martin for their hard work with the Outreach Commission. However, they have both stepped down as co-chairs this year, and a new leader will be decided in the imminent future. I also want to thank our outgoing vestry members, Bill Tobash and Jim Hall, for their hard work and their commitment to the leadership of this parish. They have served with diligence and distinction. I want to take a moment to especially highlight and extend my profound thanks to Beth Hester, our 60th anniversary chairperson and her team for their commitment to our 60th anniversary. Thank you for your enthusiasm and your commitment. Through their efforts, I hope that all of us will join in the celebrations over the course of this year. 60 years is a wonderful time, a great time, a testimony to God's faithfulness, and of course, to our faithfulness in this part of his vineyard. So, for our 60th anniversary, we have chosen the theme, Bearing Witness to the Past, Providing Service for the Future, 60 Years of Faithful Worship. I entreat you all, I implore, I beseech you all, that we make this 60th anniversary a momentous celebration, something to be remembered. 
As I conclude, I also want to give thanks for the lay leadership of this parish, especially our hardworking ones, Fred and Tom, who once again this year have guided us wisely and worked very hard to achieve the goals which they set for themselves. You have supported them and given them the resources that are required to fund both the maintenance of these buildings and the work of the gospel. I offer gratitude also to each and every parishioner, the officers and members of the vestry and Deacon Tony for their support and friendship. Of course, to Joanne, the parish administrator, whose personality and hard work ensure that our office is a well-oiled and well-ran machine. Certainly, she keeps the glow alive in our office. So, two years in as your priest, eh? And I pray many more to go. Both years, I must say, have been deeply rewarding for me, save a few moments of exhaustion and challenge. Although my excitement has not wavered, there are times I fret or become concerned about our growth and our development. Yes, which priest would not like to see greater attendance every Sunday morning? Which priest would not like to see more people in the pews, better stewardship, more envelopes in the plate? I sit with mouth agape sometimes at what it might take to get there. And God, I'm sure, smiles at my lack of faith. I simply mention this because as one priest said before, I want this church to flourish, not as a monument to my own ego, but to the greater glory of God. Imagine, dear friends, our beloved parish fully alive, even more so than it is now. That would be the glory of God. And who would not want a glimpse of that glory? So, thank you for supporting me. Thank you for your commitment. Thank you for not texting or sleeping during my sermons. You don't do that, do you? I hope not. <laughs> but thank you for listening and for your patience and for your continued commitment. May God continue to bless the ministry and mission of this parish. And may he bless each and every one of you in 2015. Every blessing, your friend and priest. Mario.